Welcome into another Purple Insider Extra. Jonathan Harrison here, joined once again by Purple Insider's Matthew Collar. So over the past three days, Collar, we've seen Derek Carr, Geno Smith, and Daniel Jones land market-setting deals. We say market-setting in that they're not the 45 to $50 million contracts that top-end QBs have been getting. The deals Carr, Smith, and Jones signed are what seem like mid-tier quarterback contracts, something that's been missing for a while in the NFL. Now that they've signed their deals, it brings to light the question that's been hovering over the Vikings heading into this offseason. No, not whether they should bring back the 90s uniforms, which they clearly definitely should. But what does this all mean for a decision on Kirk Cousins? The new league year starts next Wednesday, March 15th. Kirk is set to have a $36 million cap hit. Oh, and the Vikings are currently still $15 million over the cap, even after cutting Eric Kendricks on Monday. We've already discussed the options what the options are for the Vikings and Kirk. What I'm most interested in today is when should we expect something to happen between these two sides? It feels like the answer is either very soon or not at all, um, because one of those options on the table that you mentioned is just letting Kirk Cousins' contract play out. The problem with that is that he has a pretty big cap hit for next season. So if they do just let the contract run through next year and then plan to move on from him, maybe draft quarterback this year or next year, they're going to have to do a lot of work on the salary cap but because it isn't just, oh, they're $15 million over the cap, so they have to get underneath that. That's true to be cap compliant. But also, if they want to sign any free agents, if they want to bring back Delvin Tomlinson or potentially Garrett Bradbury or sign a center to replace Garrett Bradbury or sign a cornerback that Brian Flores wants for his new defense. All these things take money. And right now they are in the negatives. So even if they restructured contracts or moved on from some other players, there would be a significant amount of movement that they would have to do if they don't extend Kirk Cousins. Because one of the benefits of extending Kirk Cousins is that for at least the first year, you can lower the cap hit. If you go back to from 2019 to 2020, that was one of the reasons that they cited for giving him an extension was that they could lower the cap hit, sign somebody like Michael Pierce and move forward from there. And that's a a major uh, consideration that they have to make with this season. But also they're going to have to decide how long they want to tie themselves into Kirk Cousins. Because if you look at these other deals, most of the time they're two year type of contracts. So do you want to have him extended out for the next two to three years under contract? And a lot of times the money makes it hard to get out of for at least two years. Is that where you want to be with Kirk Cousins? Or as Kwesi Adolfo Mensa said at the Combine, do you want more flexibility? So there's a sacrifice no matter what way they go. And then there's always the nuclear option, which could be shopping Kirk Cousins and attempting to trade him if he says that he doesn't want to sign a short-term contract to lower his salary cap hit. So this thing could go a lot of different ways. And when you look around the league, I mean, this quarterback situation, some have been solved by Derek Carr, Geno Smith staying with Seattle, Daniel Jones staying in New York. So we've checked off some boxes there, but it's far from over. We don't know what's going to happen exactly with Lamar Jackson or Jimmy Garoppolo or Baker Mayfield or which teams are planning on drafting quarterbacks and which teams would prefer to have a veteran quarterback. And we don't even know where the Vikings stand in that officially because they're coming off a 13 win season. And yet all signs point to having to do a lot of rebuilding in this roster and having a a more difficult time putting out the same amount of talent that they had last season. So there are a lot of considerations here and the timeline is extremely unclear, but if they're going to sign him to an extension, it is very likely to happen before the start of free agency and the start of the league year. Uh, Otherwise, a lot of different things can happen. And really, you can even push that forward a little more to the legal tampering period, which starts, I believe, on March 12th. Um, They're going to want to start getting in the ground floor with free agents there. So, I mean, the answer is anytime now, (laughs) anytime now, if they're if they're going to do it. But if they don't by next week, then an extension probably isn't happening. There's a lot to do and not a lot of time for the Vikings. That's been another Purple Insider Extra for Bring Me the Sports. Be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to the Purple Insider Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Talk to you next time.